Hello. Hi. And welcome back to another episode of Breaker and Banter. It is a hairstylist adjacent podcast where each week, two friends who also happen to be hairstylists break down our weeks in the break room. I'm your host, Hunter Walden. And I am your hostess, Erica the Red. And today we had a show stopping guest on on the show. Uh, Her name is Gina Micheletti. Mm -hmm. She is a salon owner, hair extension guru, hair extension educator, educator for Bellamy hair, Mm -hmm. as well as most recently a reality TV star. Yes. She is on the lifetime, lifetime Lifetime network uh, on married at first sight. And if you are here to hear about Gina's journey on married at first sight, that will come at the end End of the episode. episode, (laughs) After we talk about the nitty gritty of her hair extension career. It's a good one. It's a good one. So without further ado, welcome to the break room. Yeah. This way in like four hours. Mm -hmm. We go this way. It's like all day long. Are you guys both local? I'm from Oregon, actually. Oh, okay. Yeah. And I'm from East Tennessee. Okay. So you're on the opposite side. Yep, mm-hmm. From you, yeah. So did you go to school after being a hairdresser, or did you go to broadcasting school for broadcasting and then and become then a hair. hairdresser? Yeah. So I actually started um, doing hair and makeup in high school, because I did theater and television. Mm-hmm. So I would do hair and makeup for the shows, and then went more notably into like broadcasting through college and I minored in theater. Okay. Um, but my mom worked in a tanning salon for a while doing nails and then she moved. She'd be like the one nail tech that they'd have at a hair salon. <laughs> yeah. So I grew yeah. Up in the hair world and then liked makeup first. And then, um, I don't know. I just always, I don't know if you guys can relate to this, but I always became friends with hairstylists. Yeah. Yeah. It was like my crew. I mm-hmm. felt like it was in my blood. So, um, went to college first, moved to Nashville, and then had bartended all through like college the whole time. And so was actually working on Broadway when I decided I wanted to be a hairstylist. Mm-hmm. Yes. I love it. Yeah. So, well, now we've already started on like the whole journey thing. <laughs> yeah. Um, so after becoming a hairstylist, how long was it before you were like, okay, I want to do extensions? Um, let's see. It was pretty quick. Um, I got into extensions when people didn't want you to know that they were wearing extensions. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So it was 2014, um, and I was actually bartending, and we were interested in, as clients. We wanted to wear hair extensions. Yeah. And so I went to school in 2013, graduated, and then was like, I kind of want to wear them first to decide if I really, you know, everyone had the stigma yeah. mm-hmm. with hair extensions, like they damage your hair or whatever it was. Um, so... <laughs> Wore a set, and I was like, okay, I really like these, and then um, decided to get certified and really just started with eye tips. So I certified with a company called Dreamcatchers. They were really popular mm-hmm. too. Back in the <laughs> day, yeah. And um, that's all I started doing all day long. I was I eye started, tips. yeah, I started actually in a Sola suite. Well, assisted, and then the um, stylist that was my mentor, her and I left our salon right when I was done assisting, and we started in Sola. Um, in 2015, and at that point, salon suites weren't really a thing. They guy. weren't a mm-hmm. thing. Yeah, it was yeah. Like one of the first ones. It was new and cool. Yeah, and so we were like, okay. Like, I remember us sitting at Pinewood Social and, like, naming our business was Atlas Color and Design. Oh. So we were like, we love to travel. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> so cute. Yeah, and um, I think it helped that I worked in the bar because you make fast cash on mm-hmm. Broadway, and so everyone was like, oh, you wear extensions? I want to try them. Yeah. So, um, yeah, just started doing eye tips from there. That's cool. Yeah. So you're five times extension certified. Yeah. So you don't have to name any brands or anything, but why is it so important for someone to be certified by a s- brand or, or a an individual mm-hmm. or a company to do extensions? I think that um, it's just important because it's education. And there are so many stylists out there and, th- and you know I train now that's how we all know each other right mm-hmm. um, yeah but there are so many stylists that don't realize that you you know sure you can watch a YouTube video and try to do something but there are so many technicalities with extensions and it's so important to be educated because you can seriously damage someone's hair um, you can make extensions look really bad yeah mm-hmm. um, and so just the same as lightener or anything else it's it's the same type of ex- education you want to be educated to know like I'm maintaining integrity of my client's hair I'm making my work look good Mm -hmm. so people want to come to me um 
And just as a stylist, I think it's like moral code to know that you're doing something the right way. Right. So what took you to each brand that you chose? Like, what was your decision yeah. on like finding that perfect match? So I think with Dreamcatchers, I really didn't know. I was like, okay, <laughs> extensions, cool. Yeah. It was one of the only ones. Yeah, right? it was one yeah, of the only was. ones. And um, so that was kind of just like a referral. One of my friends had been doing them and I wore them. Now my hair is so thick. I'm just like not an eye tip gal. I will have to mm-hmm. wear like 8 million <laughs> to do anything in my hair. So at the time, um, that was like the most well-known one. And then from there, I think the weft started getting popular. So um I'm just, I've always been kind of like someone that wants to learn it all. I'm like, I want to go after education. So a brand would pop up. And I think the main reason I would choose a different one is just for a different method. And so there Mm. weren't a ton of brands like, you know, with dream catchers, it was just eye tips. And then you're like, okay, well, I kind of heard of tape ins, but I don't really know Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. what that's about. So you'd pop to a different method. And then Mm -hmm. all of a sudden it was like the hair by Chrissy craze. And you're like, oh, what is weft? Yeah. Right. <laughs> and so I popped into learning about Weft. Um, and so I'd, I'd certified with a, a couple companies for Weft and tapes and eye tips. And then had never really dabbled with keratin bonds, which is funny because that's like my number one right now yeah. in this one. Um, but I still was like, I don't know if they damage. Like, mm-hmm. it's weird. I feel like a the lot of people are asking about keratin bond, yeah, bonded extensions now. They are really, really, they've already made a comeback on the West Coast. Mm-hmm. And so I feel like things that start out West kind of start to trickle. Trickle to over us. here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and so they're, they're becoming really popular there. And I've always been kind of intimidated, I would say, in the last few years, even as an educator. Um, and I think it boiled down to using brands that didn't have an easy like removal. Mm-hmm. Um, so I would feel like I was damaging hair. Yeah. Taking them out. Same with tapes or anything yeah. mm-hmm. else. If you're not using a good brand, you're like, I don't know that I believe that this works, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and so with Bellamy, that was the brand that I landed on. Um, and now I've been using them for five years. And so right. I haven't, I haven't felt the need to switch. And it, the thing that drew me to them was that they offer every method. Yeah. And so, they do tape-ins, eye-tips, keratins, and now we have three different types of weft that you can use. Um, and so what I learned through my journey with extensions, if you will, is that it's not one method fits all, mm-hmm. right? And yes. so it's nice to have, like, several different tools in your tool belt to be able to use for, like, the finest of hair, the thickest of hair, d- you know, dependent on your lifestyle, whatever it is. So, yeah, that's kind of how I ended up there. Awesome. I like it. So I have one more question about education and then I kind of want to go more on like your journey with Bellamy Mm -hmm. a little bit. Yeah. Um, What is your opinion on certif like virtual certifications? I think virtual certification can be great if you have in person, in person experience with it, with extensions. Mm -hmm. So like getting my words out. Um, (laughs) So virtual, I actually just had a girl in my certification this last week and she did the virtual training um, and then she still came to the hands-on because she just figured out, like, I've never touched a hair extension before. Mm-hmm. So this is really hard to learn it virtually. Um, and so for me, when I took my Bellamy certification, we didn't offer the the digital, like, format. Um, but I had been doing extensions for five years. And so right. I probably could have, you know, excelled doing a virtual class. But for someone that's never touched a hair extension, I think it's super important to have that, like, hands-on. Hands-on. Or someone that can, like, point out little things that you can't really see, mm-hmm. you know, online. Well, that makes sense. What I liked about the Bellamy certification was, like, you sit for a second, then you go do. Mm-hmm. Then you sit, then you do. And, like, it and was I just like so a... I so bored. Like, I don't know if I could pay attention if I was just watching something online. Right. I'd have to be, like, hands-on, as hairstyles were visual. Yeah, so, I agree. Mm-hmm. We've talked about that online It's hard versus... to listen and be like, yeah, let me try. And then... I taught the the virtual education for a while. I, I scaled back to to focus on salon stuff, but even with that, it's it's just a different ball game. It's it's harder because you're having to literally do the work on a mannequin and then send in photos and have it like graded. Mm-hmm. Oh, and that's how Bellamy works. So it's not like, okay, take the class and you're checked Done. off. Like right. yeah, you that's actually good. get graded like it's a college course. But still, at that point, it's like there's little things I feel like you can't catch as easily in a photo that you can if you're, like, up close, like, watching someone's hand move and right. mm-hmm. being able to give them tips that you wouldn't see just and from a photo. immediate feedback mm-hmm. in the moment. Yeah, that makes yeah. sense. And even mm-hmm. as an advanced person, like, someone that had already 
been trained heavily in extensions and took the course, I noticed little things like, hey, do you know if you just move your hand mm-hmm. a little bit or if you try this, it was almost like ways to polish. Yeah. yeah. Things that you wouldn't get. Well, that's yeah. what sets you apart, I think, from other people. Mm-hmm. You Did you get certified kind of throughout your journey of opening like your own suite and your own salon and all of that? Or was that like something you did after or before? Yeah, I started my first, the Dreamcatcher certification was right after I graduated cosmetology school. So I was actually apprenticing Mm -hmm. um, when I did my Dreamcatchers one. And then, you know, me and my friend had left and done our suite. And then, yeah, I just kind of sought different training throughout the years. Um, And then I would say the last one I did was obviously with Bellamy. Mm -hmm. Um, And I've kind of been wanting to, like, just take another extension course. I'm like, why not? I kind of want to just try it out. There's so many new methods out there. Um, And the cool thing with Bellamy is uh, they're all for that. They're like, at the end of the day, we're a brand. We're not a method. Mm -hmm. We'll teach you how to install our hair. But um, if you want to do waterfall beaded row, which I've done that certification, or if you want to do whatever, the Luna method or whatever is out there, you can still use their hair. So I had the itch to jump back in. There's so many out there. I saw somebody talking about the other day um, why, like, I think it was a, like, a reel, and it was, like, stylists stitching together different methods to make their own method you know what I mean and why that can be dangerous like how you have to have the foundation and everything like that but you can't just like there has to be a reason behind what you're doing Mm -hmm. so don't just like go at it willy-nilly but really think it through because yes there are a thousand methods out there but you can't just there still has like to be intention. Yeah, you route. can't just like be like, okay, so desperate <laughs> to make your own method and make it and like put yeah. your name on something that you're not actually thinking it through and like right making sure it works and it's going to be tried and true right, and tested. Right. And, and let me tell you, Gorilla Glue is not the same as a lock stitch. <laughs> no. <laughs> That's so Please true. Please do not glue Gosh. on the head. It happens. Right? <laughs> it happens. It, yeah, we've seen it. Yeah, It does. Well, going with your Bellamy educator role for Mm -hmm. extensions um what was that process like like becoming an educator with them yeah um let's think back it's been a while it's so crazy I just had this conversation um with a rep earlier because when I first started with Bellamy there were like maybe 15 educators at the time so I was like in the second round yeah and now we're up to like we're definitely over 50. I think we're mm-hmm. close to 70 at this point. So That's it's been, nice. I just entered my fourth year. So I got hired in 2019. Mm-hmm. But the um, head of education for Bellamy used to be a director with uh, Dreamcatchers. And okay. so I'd remembered her from some like hair shows. And they reached out um, in the beginning just to send me a swatch ring mm-hmm. to try the hair. Because mm-hmm. they had just started really selling the professional quality hair. And so... I tried it, and I was like, oh, my gosh, this is amazing. Like, I love this. And at that point, I really only knew, like, um, you know, I'd sewn a couple wefts through being certified and w- was still primarily doing eye tips and occasional tape-ins. Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't know. I always had a, a heart for mentorship. I've noticed, like, I think it started really when I started taking on an assistant um, behind the chair and, like, watching the light bulb go, go yeah. off. And, and I had come from, like, Really, I'd come from bartending, so I was used to making a lot of money. And Mm -hmm. I was like, there's no way I'm going into a different career not making the same amount of money Mm -hmm. that I make doing this. So (laughs) I've always um, tried to, like, push myself to make more than I would bartending. Yeah. Which is kind of hard. Yeah. Um, And so once I realized that was possible, and it was through my Bellamy certification, um, I started really watching my income, like, increase quickly. And how I was like, okay, I've, I've hit in this point, or I've hit this point where um, my education is actually paying off. And mm-hmm. the, the time that I've put and the, you know, knowledge that I've been giving, given, I can see it, you know, creating. Working. Working. <laughs> it's like creating it's working. a life. Yeah. And so I just really have a passion for teaching other people that that's possible. Because yeah. I think there's a hairstylist, like, stigma sometimes that you can't make, make money. Six mm-hmm. figures. Yeah. Mm-hmm. At that time, now I think everyone kind of, through social media and stuff is like, you can definitely, people are like still surprised at how much money you can make. Yeah. Hair. Oh, absolutely. Well, and I like the, almost the branding that Bellamy has with their educators getting out of like Maseratis and oh, walking down the street yeah. with Louboutins. Like money guns. Mm-hmm. Like, <laughs> yeah. I, it's just like, you want to do this? You can. You can. Yeah. Come on, honey. And I loved with them too. There's like, 
there's no secret. Like, yeah. we don't make you sign an NDA. We want you to, like, be able to go online, go on Instagram and see how to anchor a weft. Like, of course we want you to take a certification. And that's supposed to be your continued education is seeing these mm-hmm. videos. But, like, we don't want this to be a secret. Like, mm-hmm. we want you guys to make money. Um, I'm fine with people, like, writing me, you know, a DM asking, like, hey, what would you do to get to this point? Like, I love sharing my story. And yeah. And so that was kind of what made me want to educate is seeing, like, okay, I went from making so much money bartending to making more, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. like working smarter, not harder Yeah, in a career that I actually love that never feels like work. Yeah. Um, and I want other people to feel the same way. You don't have to work till 4.30 in the morning. Yeah, it's nice. <laughs> <laughs> that part well, would be so sometimes hard. Sometimes, maybe. <laughs> it's hard, yeah. Um, let's take a quick break. We didn't start with our peaks and our pits because I'm a big old dum-dum. Oh, so the peak and pit, you guys go first so I can okay. leave. Um, so my peak this week is I'm so honored that you literally got off of a plane, <laughs> went to work, and came like came here and spent the time that you could be with yourself and your dog, like taking oh, care of yourself. Sweet. I'm extremely honored that you chose to like be here with us. Sweet. So I appreciate that. That is my peak. And my pit. I haven't heard this. <laughs> You've heard this. I texted you this this morning. Oh. <laughs> um, my worst nightmare came true. <laughs> so this is a good one. I was gifted a, a RoboVac thing, you okay. know, and I have three dogs. Well, this morning, I guess it just decided it was going to start at 6 a.m. And apparently a dog had used the bathroom. Yeah, three dogs plus one. You have an extra Plus dog one, right yeah. Now. I have a bonus dog right and now. another one downstairs. Yeah. <laughs> and then and an another one. one downstairs. Um, but yeah, the RoboVac ran over some shit. Oh, no. Yeah. And then it just, like, takes it. Yep. It doesn't just... Yeah. <laughs> yep. It just throws it all over mm-hmm. your house. Oh, yep. no. So I don't know if I'm more mad that the dog shit in my floor or that the vacuum the randomly went, went off. Went <laughs> I don't... I haven't decided yet. I was yet. like, that's like something you read about on the internet. That's not a pit. And uh-huh. laugh because it's not you. That's a pit. <laughs> well, and I woke up this morning. I went, oh, uh, no. That's the worst way to wake up. Yeah. That smell is like, it's like will haunt you. Yes. <laughs> it's so bad. Oh, God. My okay. dog's 80 pounds, so it's probably <laughs> I was going to say that. It will wake me up. I'm like, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. There's an accident. We're in trouble. I should have taken you out last night. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Erica? My peak is that it is four sleeps until my son comes. So I'm very excited for that. And then my pit. What did I say my pit was? Mm, I don't Uh, remember. uh, mm, 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 mm. (laughs) I don't remember either. Clearly wasn't that pity. Apparently so. Went not too bad. I don't remember. You've had a pretty good week. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. No pit, I guess. All right. <laughs> Moving Let's on. Let's see. Peak of the week. I mean, I would say this too. I mean, honestly, like, it, it is a peak to be able to come and do this because my life has just been so nuts mm-hmm. over the last <laughs> few months. Yeah. Literally, uh, the last year and a half has just been crazy like I pulled out of one construction lease because of like a weird contractor thing and yeah just has been crazy and so I'm really excited for the time where I won't be worried about construction or (laughs) remodel or like any of like Mm. the parts of opening a business that Mm -hmm. no one wants to deal with anymore um so it's nice to just like sit and hang out with hairstylists and like you know dive into like why you do what you do right so that's definitely a peak today um, and I'm well rested. Look, I look good. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then Pitt, let's see. I mean, really it changes daily just with construction mishaps and it's just part of it. We had, um, I redid all the floors in the space, um, that I'm at. So I don't even know if I've told you guys about the new space. That I found. I've seen it Are on you your Instagram. Are you familiar oh, with lo- the dry house? Mm-hmm. No. Okay. It was that location. So it used to be the dry house. She closed, leased out like I, I leased out the space um, okay. that she was in previously. So now I'm just remodeling it. Um, but I would say the pit is I went to redo the floors, and the floors look beautiful. But 
I wasn't aware that it's like such a strong smell, I guess, with the chemicals. Oh, and oh. so now I feel kind of like a bad neighbor because we've gotten some complaints about oh, no. like the art gallery in the the store um, oh, that's next no. to us. So I need to take them some like baskets of goodies, whoopsies, free blowout gift cards. Or right, start, right. Start sorry. on a bad, you know, like, yeah. Sorry, I'm a bad neighbor. <laughs> um, so that's just all part of construction stuff, though. But I guess if I had to choose a pit, that would probably be it. That would be yeah. it. Yeah. So going back to educating with extensions, mm-hmm. is there anything you wish you would have known before you became an educator that now you're like, oh, okay, cool. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. part of it. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think, I don't know if you can relate to this, but it feels like such a glamorous job, right? Mm-hmm. When you're like, I'm mm-hmm. going to be an educator for a brand. Do you like see the glamour of it? And it is like, don't get me wrong. It's an amazing job, but it is a really, really tough job. Um, realistically as an educator, like you would make more probably behind the chair. Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. um, Yeah. On a day that you're doing education. And so I tell this when people ask me like, oh, I want to educate for Bellamy. I'm like, do you want to educate for Bellamy? Because you really need to want to. You want to. Yeah. Like it's, there's travel, there's, it's exhausting. Like our classes, we hold 20 typically. Mm -hmm. And so you're always like going around every single person and checking everything and people are throwing hands up. Like, can you check this? Can you check this? Um, and then, you know, you're talking for our classes are eight hours per day. So it's a two day master class. And so that eight hours is like full. And sometimes you'll have Mm -hmm. the quietest class where you're like, someone going to ask a question. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Are you going to give me time Uh to like get a drink of water? Yeah. (laughs) And so I think going into it, I would have still chosen that job, but, um, just knowing it's, it is, it's public speaking, which is like a big fear in itself. Um, there's lots of things to remember. You're on the road, you're away from your family, your dogs, Mm -hmm. whatever it is to Mm -hmm. travel and teach. Um, and it's really, really long, exhausting, mentally draining days, but Mm -hmm. it's worth it. Like I always love nothing more at the end of class than when stylists are like, I'm so inspired or like, I can't wait to get back to this one. Like it's worth it, but it's, it's not easy for sure. Right. It's a, it's very time consuming mm-hmm. too. It's not just going for those two eight hour days. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. It's you the leave days like and Saturday. weeks. Yeah. The travel days, the time you have yeah. to spend prepping. Mm-hmm. So do, do they give you like a format that you just go by or do you build your own class based on a what structure? Yeah. They give us a format. So with Bellamy, um, you guys might know from being in the class, like right. we're intense. Mm-hmm. So um, it is a master class. They yeah. don't mess around. And we like to call it as educators, like your extension boot camp. And so mm-hmm. when yeah. I trained, I went out for 10 days. Um, and each day we learned every method. Like we learned a different method. Like we had never learned it before. And then we learned it again and learned what to look for that someone could do wrong in the class. Mm. Um, and everything's like based off of a PowerPoint for us. Um And even down to our verbiage, like we call students like learners, like everything is like very by the book. And so it's, it's formatted. I've stepped on to like, I was actually promoted this year to like a senior (gasps) educator. Yeah, which is nice. Thanks. And then we started a new mentorship program too. And so when new educators come in, they selected a few of us to mentor them and kind of help them, you know, with the basic things like invoicing or um, just being able to to navigate through, like, the new educator type mm-hmm. stuff. Like, what are mm-hmm. you nervous about? What can I help with? Um, I forgot where I was going with that. That's a great idea. It is great. Yeah, we did that, but I – oh, this is where I was going. <laughs> so I even had to tell them, I was like, you know, um, I know we have a format, but for me, I had to go through each slide and be like, okay, how do I implement this in the salon? Like, we talk about things all the way down to, like, quality of hair. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, why does that matter? Yeah. And I had to figure out, like, okay, for me, it started to matter because if I have a consultation and someone comes in and they aren't wearing Bellamy and they've, you know, been burned by coming in and being like, well, I spent $2,000 on this hair and now I can't brush through it or mm-hmm. the color just yes. isn't what I thought. Like, those are quality issues. Yeah. And so. It's, it's nice, like, the creative freedom, I guess, comes in being able to share your, your personal stories behind the chair of, like, mm-hmm. hey, this is where this actually has helped me. Yeah. Real life examples. That, yeah. 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 We want to know a little bit, you talked about construction mm-hmm. disasters. How? <laughs> let's talk about your little, your journey a little bit when, uh, like, the salon ownership. How salon has that been going? Ownership. Um, it's interesting. I had a... One of my friends, like, 
shared a Facebook message with me that I'd sent him in like 2014. Yeah. About wanting to open a salon. And this is like right when I graduated mm -hmm. cosmetology school because I think everyone's like, I want to own a salon. And you I like, know I did. Right. Yeah. yeah. You're like, yeah, glamour. Totally. Yeah. Um, and it is tough, you guys. Like, I, it's way easier working behind the chair. Whether you're, I would actually make more as a like commission stylist. I mm -hmm. think. Um, but it goes back to the same reason that I've chose to educate. It's like, I love now having the opportunity to. Like, I'm in charge of people's livelihood, right? Yeah. And, like, they depend on me, and I love, like, watching them grow, watching them flourish, like, spending time with them. Like, they're like my kids. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> <laughs> but as far as ownership, I mean, you just, with any business, I think I've learned, like, you have no idea, like, what it actually takes until you're in it. Mm -hmm. And for me, this journey has been, like, one unexpected, like, misstep <laughs> through everything. <laughs> you know, I... I started in Sola, like, after a commission salon. So I was actually let go from a commission salon back in, what year was that? Like, 2018, I think. And it was, like, one of the top salons in the city. Okay. Um, the owner and I are now friends. Like, she actually apologized. Mm -hmm. And I had no idea why I was let go at the time. Um, that seems to be a trend in this industry. Yeah. I was just told, like, r on the phone, your technical skill is not sufficient enough. And I was like, so I'm bad at hair? Like, that's oh, like okay. it was like a, you know, worth crusher. Um, oh. And that's another reason I love educating, because I don't think anyone should be able to to speak that over you. Mm -hmm. you know? And so um, that kind of like put a fire under my butt to be like, OK, mm -hmm. well, let's just watch I'll this then. I'll <laughs> show you <laughs> what. Yeah. Um, and so I went into Sola and I'd come from Sola, left to go into a commission salon because I missed having a team. Mm -hmm. Like I missed being around other hairstylists. And, you know, it was kind of lonely. Yeah. And sweet. And so once I got fired, I was like, well, I'm going back to Sola because I don't trust anyone. <laughs> mm -hmm. And so I did. I went back to Sola and was in like the tiniest little baby suite. And at that point, that's when I realized I had something different because I had like 80 people follow me mm -hmm. and I was booked out. And I was like, OK, well, I must be OK at hair because all right. these people yeah. want to come with me. And so um, started at Sola. And then within like six months, I was like, OK, I kind of want to get an assistant and like go into a bigger suite. Yeah. So I went into a double suite and um, hired an assistant, and then I outgrew that. And so Sola was building their new location in Nashville, and I talked to the leasing manager and was like, how crazy would it be to have a triple suite? Like, mm -hmm. can you just leave a wall out and give me a three chair? So she did that, and then we added on a fourth chair, mm -hmm. and then I outgrew that and kept just adding people in, and then um, added on another double suite, and at that point, I was like, this is just ridiculous. Yeah. Like, I'm paying so much rent to work in Sola that I might as well just have a space. Have a space. Yeah. And it really is. My rent is the exact same to mm -hmm. go into a brick and mortar as it is yeah. in Sola. Um, but I think my mindset was always like I wanted to be around a team. Mm -hmm. That was just kind of taken from me. And so I was like, okay, now this gives me a reason to like start my own team and do mm -hmm. things differently than a lot of salons yeah. I've worked in. Yeah. Um, so once I started outgrowing, um, I was like, all right, I'm going to sign on the space. I was like, it's the right time. We're like bursting at the seams. It's just, it's time to make a move. So I did. And at the time, the contractor I met with had told me the place that I'd found before I signed the lease. I was like, I want to make sure I can afford this. Mm -hmm. So I was told the build out could be around 150000 Okay. And so, um, you know, we're like, okay, perfect. I yeah. was like, my bu I'll budget like 250 mm -hmm. in case we go over. Just in case. Just in case. And then for like design and all that. And um, we got like our architectural plans done. I submitted for permits. In May we started. I did plumbing. I did electrical, a little bit of electrical. And then the contractor called me and was like, hey, things are a little more expensive than what I thought. And it was actually going to be like four to five hundred thousand <gasps> just oh. for construction, which would put me at like five to six to design. Oh my gosh. Oh my God. Train wreck. And so I was like, I can't, like, this is like, I don't know how I'm even going to make this money appear. Yeah. I don't have an extra four hundred thousand. <laughs> sure. Chilling. Let me just pull that out. Yeah. And so I was like, all right, I guess I'll try to get an SBA loan or, you know, I'm like applying for all this different, you know, different financial like outlets like loans mm -hmm. and lines of credit or whatever um and it just seemed risky I was like if I would have known that I would have just like bought a house <laughs> and, like, <laughs> made it into a um 
Yeah. So I paid a pretty massive amount of money to get out of the lease. Mm. Um, <laughs> but I I found one space right after that that was like beautiful and perfect. Sat on that for about three months because I was waiting for those owners to write me up a lease. Yeah. Spent another like over six thousand dollars making more architectural plans, and then they just decided they didn't want to lease it. Oh my god. <laughs> So then Whoa. the other one popped up two weeks later in January, and it's it's good. It's it'll only take like thirty to fifty thousand to remodel in full. I'd had all my stuff, you guys, sitting in storage <laughs> for the last year. It just got delivered on Monday, oh um, but I had gosh. chairs, bowls, mirrors. All my stuff has been sitting in a storage warehouse for a year. Um, oh my god! And we finally unloaded it, and we should be open in like two to three weeks. So what Yay! is your current, <laughs> what is your current situation? Are you still in the sola? I'm still in sola. So um, we also I have signed, four minutes. Yeah, Kay. I signed the lease. Um, let's see on February first, uh-huh. and then I, uh, you know, we need a space to work, and so we finished floors, we finished all the paint, unloaded everything, and now we're just like in the install phase. Okay. Um, since it was previously a salon, it's just like a change. Of That's occupancy. nice. So everything the universe is like doing me a solid. I'm right. Like, okay. So. Really, I shouldn't overlap rent or anything at all, but um, Sola has been amazing. I've worked there forever. Um, I did, like, their Faces of Sola program Mm -hmm. at one point, and so I'm super close with them on, like, a corporate level. Yeah. And so they basically allowed me. They're like, Gina, we know. Like, you just give us a 30-day heads up, and we'll let you out of your lease. Shimmy on out. That's nice. Yeah, you can shimmy out. You talked a lot about team. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What has your experience been with? And like, no, when we met, you were talking about building a team. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I know a little bit about it, but what is your experience that you would like to share been building your team? Building my team. You guys, I've been lucky. Like, I feel like people have found me. Nice. I've never Mm -hmm. really had to like go out and search. Um, It's always been like serendipitous. Like one girl literally saw my like, you better slay sign. (laughs) <laughs> like driving by and she was like oh that looks like a cool spot or they'll you know with Bellamy people will reach out through Instagram mm-hmm. if they're like moving into town and they're like oh she does extensions I want to learn so I think I'm lucky in a sense that I have that educator background and so people mm-hmm. are naturally drawn to like wanting to work for me mm-hmm. um I've definitely learned to not just accept anyone <laughs> I know that sounds terrible yeah but no. like have more of like an interview process because I'm, it's easy for me to be like, whoever, you're hired, you know, like, I have such a heart for people, um, but I had to learn, like, okay, I have to make sure they fit in with my team, and there's, Mm -hmm. like, you know, we're so, like, tight-knit, there's no gossip, we just don't have time for it. I love it. Um, And so, you know, we help each other out all the time, like, whether it be helping someone shampoo or whatever, Um, so, yeah, just making sure someone still wants that culture and that team, Um, so I've been lucky in terms of hiring, um, and just knowing, I mean, it's a business. At the end mm-hmm. of the day, no matter how close I am with everybody, like, people's lives change. They mm-hmm. move, they decide they don't want to do hair. They mm-hmm. decide they might like the salon up the street better. Um, and so I try to stay open-minded with my staff and knowing, like, hey, this doesn't have to be your forever. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but when you're here, you're committed, you know. And Do you ever feel like people come to you to work to gain the knowledge that you have and – and benefit <laughs> from that and then leave like yeah. how does that feel as a salon owner I mean it sucks but you can't the only way that I've learned to to mitigate that and I've, this comes from just like you if you talk to any successful business owner they'll tell you the first step in anything is get a lawyer mm-hmm. get a lawyer get a lawyer like yeah protect your business right and so for me I do that's one thing that I'm um I've been working with an employment lawyer on like my non-solicit like my you know non-competes don't really hold up in the state of Tennessee, but Mm -hmm. non-solicits do. Um, And just making sure, like, with my assistants especially, like, if they're coming in to work for me, um, there is a contract that they have to sign saying, like, hey, if you're going to work for me and I'm going to teach you everything I know for a year, then you're going to put a year back into my business to pay for your education, Mm -hmm. or you're just going to pay me back. (laughs) It's really, yeah, that's simple. I have heard of that um, at a salon that I worked at. I didn't do the, like, apprentice associate Mm -hmm. program, but there were people that did, and there were people that had to pay off their work off their time, you know what I mean, before they could leave. Yeah, because realistically, I mean, for me to offer, like, advanced education and for someone to just Mm -hmm. come watch for the day would be, you guys know, probably around $1,000, $2,000 for something like that. So if you're opening up your life to teach someone, you know, 10 years worth of, 
your of education and yeah. life experience, and they have to take that seriously. So I have, and that's, you know, again, you navigate through mistakes. So I've had mm-hmm. two assistants in the past mm-hmm. that have done that, and they leave right at the end of their training, and most of them want to start their own business. Yeah, because <laughs> they, know they, like, um, they know everything now. Yeah. I mean, what else do we have on that? I think that we've covered everything. All right, are we down to the juicy bits? We're (laughs) down to the juicy bits. The juicy bits. So you've been going through all this whole journey with opening your salon, and you've also been probably pretty busy doing other things (laughs) this last year or so. It's been a crazy time. What what else have you been up to? Well, you know, I got married. Oh, okay. did you? I did. I um, I married a stranger. You know this guy for a long time, yeah, right? We met, yeah, we met at the altar. So, okay. Um, <laughs> it's a show called Married at First Sight. Uh-huh. And honestly, the, the timing of it was kind of a blessing in disguise. Mm-hmm. I find I found out everything about um, the contractor situation, the mm-hmm. build-out, like a week before filming started. <laughs> oh, oh, shoot. Yeah. So you're really like, I'm about to in. do so. Right. Yeah, and so I was like, this is actually a little bit of a... A good distraction, uh-huh. if you will. Mm-hmm. At least a, a crazy distraction because you know you're going through the filming process and nav- navigating marriage with a person you've never met. So um, it was crazy. I yeah. mean, it was, we're now halfway through airing mm-hmm. the season. And so I think this week is honestly like our halfway point. And so can't share any spoilers yes. because. If you don't know about the show, because you guys haven't seen it, right? I haven't, haven't. seen it. Okay, so now you'll have to. Uh, I was going to say, we say, may I have like a binge fest the, after like, this. I like um, Instagram, <laughs> you know, but I don't watch the show. Okay. <laughs> so the whole premise of the show of Married at First Sight, I'm on season 16, mm-hmm. um, is that you have an expert, like a team of expert matchmakers, mm-hmm. and they find your perfect match based off of, you know, stuff that you send in and they analyze. So. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a, a long list of questions and psyche vows and all the things. Um, and you go on and they narrow it down. Like thousands of people apply. They narrow it down to 10. Yeah. So there's five couples and they put you with your perfect match mm-hmm. um, and you meet at the altar. So like I had my brother. So yeah, my brother and family flew in from Egypt. Like we, I each, saw clips of that. Yeah. So the wedding we met, you know, on the mm-hmm. wedding day. And it's a full blown wedding. Like we got married at the yeah. Conrad in Nashville. Hank was there. He's like the star of the show. Oh. Um, we each were able to have 12. But you do a full ceremony, mm-hmm. full um, reception, photos, everything with like your new spouse. And then you go on a honeymoon. So we went to Jamaica, mm-hmm. um, which was so interesting because so. Our, like, biggest thing, like, debacle on the show um, is we got into a little tiff on the honeymoon. And part of it was me saying I wasn't initially attracted to redheads. Mm, and mm-hmm. so, and I used the term ginger. <laughs> because in the hairstyling yeah. in the hairstyling world, that's not, like, a big deal. Yeah. Like, I'm pretty right. sure Bellamy has a swatch called ginger. Ginger. Um, but it's a very derogatory term, so I've learned. And so I've had to, like... Did you have to apologize oh for that? Oh, my God. Yeah, I had to have... I've had so many haters, like, in my DMs, like, had some negative business reviews. That's like, so funny. It's been wild. Why? So we worked past it, but it was... It was a, a thing. That's a hilarious weeks. because two episodes ago, our episode title is the one about ginger. The one about, see, yeah. you guys better watch out. Right. I hope we get canceled. Listen, so I am a ginger, the so right. I can say what I want. Yeah. Is it derogatory? Am I, am I you know what? <laughs> yeah, if you want to be a snowflake <laughs> about it. like <laughs> I go, I thought it was the same as being like blonde. Like, I don't, you know, he was, it, yeah. he was more into blonde. It is, but like, there is also like, you do people get make fun of you for being a redhead and they yeah. usually mm-hmm. will call you a ginger and that's usually the word yeah. that they use for it. Mm-hmm. So like Oh yeah, I was schooled on it and I did learn. I was like, listen, I totally like I'm sorry. Like I didn't mean yeah. to offend you. Um and we worked past it with Grace, but that was like the biggest <laughs> drama of you know, I had people being like, You hate redheads and do hair. I'm like, Whoa, like I didn't say didn't I hated say them. that. I just it's not my first pick. <laughs> that's oh, okay. <laughs> um so that was one thing that we dealt with. If it show. makes you feel better, I just said on the episode about how I had an ex boyfriend who was legitimately afraid of like redheads. Tell for her a while. what. She, tell her what he said. He what? said he thought that redheads smell like um, string cheese. What? <laughs> okay, listen. 
this guy just wasn't in the spotlight like me. Right? Yeah, um, exactly. Because <laughs> I was just like, I'm just like not initially attracted to redheads, but like my ex-boyfriend has a big red beard. Mm-hmm. And like obviously attraction can grow. Um, but yeah, the trolls came. They oh. keep, so they silly. That for me. Hey, um, at least you've got some haters. Hey, here you're we doing are. something right. right. Exactly. That's what they say. <laughs> That's yeah. Funny. That's what they say. So, but yeah, we went on a honeymoon for five days, went to Jamaica, and then you move in for eight weeks. Okay. And um, do life together. So it's all the couples live here uh-huh. in Nashville. Um, they pick different different um, cities for the seasons. So season 16 is Nashville. Uh-huh. Now they're in Denver. Um, and then at the end of the eight weeks, you sit down with the experts and you decide if you want to get married or stay married, stay married or get a divorce. So it's like, oh, dun, 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 spicy. Dun. So spicy. how long do we have to find out? Yeah. How long do we have to wait? <laughs> you're staying um, married. I think it ends in June. You guys, there's literally like 20 something episodes. We didn't even realize so many you're people. That was so many episodes. Yeah. And then there's like, you know, we've got our reunion and then they, they oh, yeah. film aware they now mm-hmm. special. So they'll air that. So um yeah, we've got a little bit of time, but So definitely longer than eight weeks of filming. Oh yeah. I filmed from like May through October. I mean, I'm still filming ra- random right. bit. Right. Randomly, yeah. 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 So, um yeah, you think about like The Bachelor. Mm-hmm. They filmed for like eight weeks, I think. Maybe oh dang! Eight to twelve. That's I'm like, quick. Okay. I married yeah. a stranger and <laughs> filmed for like right. a year. Um, Holy cow! But it was a life changing experience. I would do it all over again. Honestly, would you? Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. That's so funny. that goes to tell you the next time a recruiter reaches out. So I had did they somebody. Reach out? I did a little an interview with them. Yes, and <laughs> I decided I wasn't going to do it because I was. I didn't want to be twice divorced. Oh my god! Because I've already been divorced, and I was like, what if? What if it doesn't work? What if it doesn't work? Well, and, and it then has I was a good track record too. Like you just never know. I mean, yeah. I should have. I, yeah, should have done it. It's good. It's once str- in a it lifetime. One hundred percent super stressful. It is not for the faint of heart. <laughs> um, and you know, doing it while you're also owning a business and and managing a business, you'll notice I'm the girl on there too. That's like salon, 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 salon. I love it. Oh, yeah. like, if you don't know, she owns a salon. <laughs> 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 I mean, that has to be That's good for narr- your business. My narrative, right? Yeah. 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 Has yeah. it helped your salon business? Um, I don't know. I mean, we've had a few people reach out. Um, I mean, you're already like, super wildly successful anyway. Yeah, mm-hmm. like, I don't think it'll hurt. The you're right. Yeah. My redhead retention might go down. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. um, I don't think it'll hurt the business, but we'll see. I don't know if it'll be like once it's, you know, finished, you know, airing. or uh-huh. whatever. We've had a few people reach out. I did have one client so far that's come in that you could tell she was like definitely nervous. Um, and I was like, oh, how did you find us? She was like, I can't tell you. Oh, and then all of a sudden she was like, I saw you on TV. And that's so <laughs> cute. I was like, you're really sweet. So that was probably the only one. But um, no, we haven't had like a huge influx of people. Huh. And do you watch the show yourself? We do. How does it we feel? We all watch it together. Really? Mm-hmm. How does it feel to watch yourself on TV? It was really strange for the first couple weeks. And now mm-hmm. it's just kind of normal. Yeah. Yeah. That's funny. Yeah. That's really cool. Yeah. I love okay. it. Well, um, where can everybody find you? Um, I would say probably Instagram's the mm-hmm. best one. It's okay. Gina dot does my hair, and then Gina our dot um, does my hair. Our salon one is Slay Bay Beauty Co. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All mm-hmm. right. Well, I think that's all we got for the people. That's all we got Thanks. for the people. Yeah. Well, uh, thank you guys all for tuning in to another episode of Break Room Banter. If you would like to follow us on our social media journeys, I am at Hair X Hunter on all the things. I am Erica the Redhead on all the things. And our podcast is at Break Room Banter Pod on all the things. Yeah. We also have a Patreon. It's www.patreon.com. It's a $5 donation monthly to support our little podcast. Little podcast. Um, and until next time, remember. You always have a seat at our table. Bye.